Welcome to Turning Tuesday, where this week function overtook form. I had to create a laminated mallet as my quill extension was stuck. The knockout bar was not getting it out, so I decided to make a wooden mallet to knock it out. I laminated this piece about two years ago, so I don't have any footage of that, unfortunately, but it is such a gorgeous piece, and I really hope you enjoy watching. We're starting off this week just by getting one end round. As you may notice, my tool rest is not wide enough to get the whole way along. So I'll start by getting one end round and then I'll move down. This is a real time cut in because I want to see just how close I am to round because most of the ghosting has disappeared. You can still see that quite obviously on the left there, but on the right as it's spinning, you're not seeing through. It's still not quite round, but it is close. Get back into it at 10 times speed. This video was recorded over an hour. And I think it came out absolutely beautiful. You see that sap inclusion starting to come out there. Inspecting this to see if it's actually going to stay together when I finish turning. It does look absolutely gorgeous. I'm just admiring it for a second and then I will get back into it. All right, so I've got that end to round. I'm about to move the tailstock to the other end and I will bring that down to round. At least I've got a reference now to get close. Give me another check in of round. Close enough. So now that I've got a round, I'm turning at about 1800 RPM. As you can see, that lamination is holding up quite nicely. I decided I'd start with the skinny end and get that formed as I don't want to lose much from the top. I'm just going to give it a tapered down later on. Again, this piece was more for function than it was for form. So what I've done here is focused on just trying to make a nice shape that feels good in the hand, but it's just 100% functional. I've just decided I like that shape that I'm coming to now. What I'm going to do is try and keep a raised center of the handle. So when it's sitting in the center of my palm, it rests in nicely. But I'd also like a dip where my thumb and pinky can sit above and below it. And now I've decided to have a bit of fun by swapping tools around. So I'm going to play with the skew. I'm going to play with the... the uh, spindle gouge and I am going to pull out a round nose carbide tip. Me playing with the skew here was less about actually making any function of it, I was just having some fun. It's always good to stay honed and play with your tools. So that when you actually want to use something seriously with them, you're not going to mess it up.
At the time of editing this video, I have broken that tool. The carbide tip no longer tightens. I suspect it's just worn a little bit and I need to replace it. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, that tool is not being used because I do not trust it. Just getting a nice little edge on that, trying to take any sharpness. So if I knock with my hand on it, I'm not going to cut myself up. So I've moved the tool rest about halfway along now so that I can focus on that transition. And I'm really starting to notice where that sap inclusion ends and I'm really liking the look of it. Taking the tool rest to the far end and I decide to start giving it that taper. Not everything you make has to be perfect. Not everything you make has to be right in the traditional sense. It just has to do what it has to do. In this case, my job was to make a functional mallet. It's a plus that it just looks beautiful. So I just grabbed the handle again just to make sure I did enjoy that feeling. And now I'm gonna give it a quick sand. So I'm gonna go 150 to 600. And then I'm going to decide to backfill the sap a little bit. As previously mentioned, I am wearing a respirator. I am wearing a face shield. It's important to take care of your lungs. This is the first video I recorded with a new microphone. I got myself a microphone that's a bit more directional. So while I'm using the air compressor, it's not being the primary noise and it's not blasting your eardrums. It's still noticeable, but it's not distracting as such. Here I am filling in some of those mineralization pockets. This will get a lot uglier than before it gets cleaner. But as you can see with that moisture going onto it now, that color is really starting to come out in that wood, which is getting me very excited for the finished product. All right, so that's now dry, and I decide to take the gluing a bit further. Dry off as much of that accelerator as I can. And then I let it sit for a bit. There's probably half an hour between those two video clips. So I've jumped straight into the sanding now and trying to take them down a little bit just to get it back to round. Pulled out some 40 grit, so I'm really trying to go aggressive on this and take it down a few layers. You can hear that popping noise. I still know it's not level. I can hear that as well. I can feel it. It's just vibrations. You can hear the air coming out on the wood more than you can the compressor.
I went to a local store here called Swap Mid Industries. I said to them, look, this is going to be used in a workshop. It's going to get filled with dust and it's probably going to die. So I asked them for a cheap directional microphone and this is the result I got. This microphone cost me about $35 and it just plugs into the back of the GoPro. It would also plug into the side of a camera if I ever upgrade to that. Now I'm just taking it back to the 600 grit and then I will apply some finish. So some of the pieces I don't like on this is how the glue finished up. There's still a couple of pieces that just catch my eye and I'm not a fan of it. But again, this is about function and not pure form. If this were for anyone but me, I would spend the time and I would get it absolutely perfect. But I just want my lathe back. And getting that quill release so that I can actually use it normally is my target. Now, as you can see, there's already quite a nice shine just at 600 grit there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is apply some beeswax. Now, the beeswax is on. I've now pulled out a microfiber cloth. This microfiber, I just slowly move. This is in real time. So as I'm moving along, you'll see it just get a bit more brown and brown and brown. And as I slowly transition, you'll just see it go with the wood. And that color is really starting to come out now and it's looking absolutely gorgeous. So I'm not only melting the beeswax in, but I'm also burnishing at the same time. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I really would appreciate it, and I look forward to making the next video. Towards the end of this video, I will throw some photos up, including some of the spots that I'm not a fan of. We're not quite finished yet. I'm going to turn it off, have a look at it in real time. And then I'm going to give it a buffer with a foam pad. I'm going to take that shine up another level again. Absolutely loving this shine it's got going now. Moving into some photos now. Here's a close up of that sap inclusion. You can really see some of those sanding marks as well as the sap inclusion there. And the finished mallet came out like this. Thank you for watching.